posted two times uh, to, to Japan, once uh, uh, as an Austrian diplomat and then as deputy head of mission for the European Commission and in between I took care of the Asia-Europe meeting, ASEM, uh, for four years uh, and so I, altogether I would say I really half of my professional life is somehow linked uh, to, to Asia. Now that's uh, uh, for, for in European um, relatively big share of, of working on Asia because uh, especially for an Austrian uh, we are not uh, particularly famous for having a keen interest in, in, in Asia. Also I must say uh, having been in, in, in Japan it was a kind ka so an imperial king uh, officer who introduced skiing to Japan. So this is probably part of the imperialistic uh, uh, part of Austria, but I think one of the better things which we left in, 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 in Japan. So they are still talking about the Chi Hitte, and they also make a Schwung. Uh, so it's uh, a few things which are left in the so-called uh, Japanese uh, language then. But on a, but on, a, on, on a more serious note, um, if, I, if we look at, at, at uh, Asia right now, then everybody is talking about the rise of China and associated, as it was mentioned, the pivot of the United States uh, to, uh, to Asia and um, what role for the European Union in that game. Um, I was confronted also here in the last uh, few days with questions like, what are your interests in Asia? beyond trade. Well, I would already say the question is not right, beyond trade. If I talk to my, and I just finished a tour of uh, the State Department and the White House now, the Security Council, the people were eager to explain to me what is also in this uh, paper or in the speech which Thomas Danielon gave recently on rebalancing, uh, the re rebalancing, what the U.S. is trying to explain to the rest of the world, especially to those in Asia who are worried that the pivot is primarily mi a military event, to explain it's not only military, it's also about economics, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. It is about engagement with, with, with Asia, and I think this is exactly where we could come in because I don't, have to, I don't have to explain to anybody that the interest of the European Union in Asia is not military. Uh, on the contrary, I have to, to explain to them what are our interests beyond trade. But to a certain sense, I could say, in this present situation, we as Europeans, as European Union, we are already there where the US now would like to get. Uh, and I think what is uh, the thinking behind this is, of course, to make uh, China be a little bit more comfortable that this is not a containment policy, this is not only uh, a, a military move. And I think this is also now the area where uh, we can come to a cooperation with, with, the, with the United States, because there we are to a certain extent uh, complementary. It would have been good, of course, the, stupid from, from our side to say we want to forget about the economic side, we want to forget about the trade side, and we want to become a strong, strategic, military, whatever player. Complete nonsense. Uh, we will never send the seventh fleet to, the, to, to, to Asia because we don't have the first one. Uh, so this is already a, a natural uh, uh, attitude, I think, which, which we have. But we do have this is sometimes forgotten. Uh, the European Union is, if I take it as a union, the biggest economy in the world. We are the, we are the biggest market, in the, the, the internal market. And this is something which we have also to bring uh, to bear. So having access to the European market, to the internal market, is especially for Asian economies, which are still very much export-oriented, an asset. And that's something we have to be aware of and which we also have to use. And there you can see, if you look back in the, in the, in the trade policy of the European Union, a certain, a certain development. 
that um, now when um, the trade commissioner, so that's the equivalent to the USTR in the European system, uh, the Gucht took, took over in the uh, second uh, Bar uh, Barroso Commission, we have a little bit of more strategic approach to trade policy and also the element of reciprocity and taking care of the interest of the European companies is put to the fore. We had in earlier times under the leadership of uh, Pascal Lamy, who is now the outgoing uh, director general of the WTO, a more multilaterally oriented, uh, perhaps I would say puristic approach to trade. When I was still posted in Japan in, in 2002, 2003, we were under the instruction from Commissioner Lamy at the, still at the time, uh, not even to talk about bilateral trade agreements. Multilateralism, finishing the Doha round, that was goal number one. Well, I think you, have, you, are, you are familiar uh, with the Doha round. This is now one of these unfinished businesses, and I fear it will remain a sort of unfinished business. And uh, we had also to change our policy. For a long time, Asia used to be the only place in the world where the European Union did not have any free trade agreement. And that's something we had to correct. We had to correct it because the multilateral route was not as promising as it used to be. And all the others also tr entered into bilateral trade arrangements. So we had to catch up. And that was done, I would say, given the complexity of trade negotiations in the, in, rel relatively quickly. Now as we speak, we are in the second year of implementing the free trade agreement with Korea, which is one of uh, the biggest free trade agreement which the European Union has ever uh, uh, concluded. Um, we have finished recently a free trade agreement with Singapore which will not change the world dramatically. However, it is a sign that we have managed to conclude with an ASEAN country and we are making progress with others. So our negotiations with Vietnam and Malaysia are in good track. And if we don't have too many political problems now with India because of the completely different uh, reasons, then we are reasonably optimistic to finish a free trade agreement with India by the end of, the, of this year, beginning of next year. We will, will, we will announce in a, in a few days when we have the summit meeting with Japan that we enter into free trade negotiations with Japan and associate it with, with it um, um, an agreement, um, a framework agreement which, which is linked and which is the political base for, for our relationship. That's also a new approach which is now, which we have tested with, 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 with Korea. The free trade agreement is linked and also legally linked with a, a, a framework agreement in which we lay out a political program. That's not necessarily to everybody's liking because we have in the free trade agreement, for example, a human rights clause. Uh, which we have to have because we are under uh, this it was a decision taken within the institutions of the European Union and the European Parliament which has to ratify uh, treaties would not accept it, it, it otherwise. But if you show up with a like-minded country and you show them normally the first draft that then they would say well you just make a mistake this is the wrong blueprint which you are showing to us that's the one you want to negotiate with the developing country. And our answer then is no. Uh, on the contrary, uh, with like-minded country, we would also like to conclude this kind of framework agreement because we would like to build up a certain standard, a standard also in terms of human rights. And therefore, as more, if everybody signs up, then we would establish that uh, standard. It's not easy. Our Canadian friend, friends are not terribly pleased the Indians are not very, ple very pleased, the Japanese are not very pleased, 
And I wonder what our American friends will say when we put on the table also a, 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 the, this uh, framework agreement with the Human Rights Clause. Not that we uh, would go around and finger point uh, on, on human rights issues, but take take the fact which I know, I know by this uh, from, from my time there. They are terribly concerned that we could use this Human Rights Clause uh, because we are protesting regularly uh, uh, if there is death penalty executions. And that's something Japan shares with the United States, so that's something Singapore shares with the United States and with, uh, and, and with Japan. And unfortunately, uh, in the last uh, months, I would say, uh, India has uh, broken the moratorium and has also had executions. And going after and pr protecting and, 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 and uh, you know, human rights is one of the core pillars of, of the EU foreign policy, which is already enshrined in the Treaty of Lisbon. There, if I may just add, add a footnote, the Treaty of Lisbon, which is a sort of constitution, if you wish, for the European Union, has an article, uh, Article 21, which is one of the rare articles, and perhaps the only one, but I have not checked on all the constitutions worldwide, where you have rules setting out the content of the foreign policy the European Union should have. And that's rather rare. And uh, the R Article 21 reads approximately that the European Union should also pursue in external relations uh, favoring the values on which it is built internally. So there is a link between Article 3 and Article 21 in legal, legal terms. So we have a sort of, of a framework, a legal framework, in which we have to do our foreign policy. And perhaps to explain one more element, what, when, when do we have a EU foreign policy? Well, we have a EU foreign policy if all 27 member states, and so 28, when Croatia is going to join, agree. Because if foreign policy is together with uh, tax policy and with social policy, the three areas where we need unanimity. So this is not the area where we can have a majority voting, like in all the other cases of policy making in the European Union. So if we don't have agreement of the 27, then we don't have an EU foreign policy, and then within the legal obligations, of coordination, coherence, uh, solidarity, uh, each and every member state can pursue its own foreign policy. That explains perhaps also sometimes why we don't have a foreign policy, because if there is no agreement, we don't have it. And then the high representative uh, is, is bound to admit that we don't have a foreign policy on a, on a specific issue, and instead of admitting, which would be perhaps a step too much, you better shut up. And then you have crying, crying silence in certain cases of, from the European Union because we don't have consensus of the 20, uh, 27. The role of the high, high representative is to, uh, to preside over the meetings of the, of the foreign ministers, so to, to, set the, to set the agenda, to, to, to draw the conclusions, but we have to work for unanimity. But once decision is taken, it is the task of the high representative to, uh, to, to have political dialogue with, with certain countries and to make sure that the, that the policy is implemented. But we never have to forget we need a first, the first step first, and that is to have agreement on, on, on a policy. That's just a, a sideline, uh, but which might help you to understand a little bit, a little bit better uh, the intricacies of policy making in the, in the, in the uh, European Union. Now, um, in, as, as I said, we are moving now a little bit more into the direction that we are more conscious that we have this economic power and that market access is one of the important elements uh, for our foreign policy. Uh, that can, of course, lead to something which we then don't like, that we are only recognized as an economic animal. So if the European Union equals import-export club, 
That's not necessarily what we want. And this is not something which is commensurate with our economic um, uh, might. Uh, in, 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 in academic literature, then you talk about the perception gap. You expect that economic actor to be strong, uh, also politically present, and to make use of its influence. And this is now where the European External Action Service which is a product of the Treaty of, of Lisbon, has a specific task. Um, the task is to devise the policy, to have the strategic thinking, and the implementation then of policies, like also trade policies, is together with PG trade. Now, when, uh, when we look at Asia, then it is clear that we have the strategic interests. Uh, if I make a sort of rollback from, 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 from trade, then you see that, uh, take the South China Sea or the East China Sea, that we have about 50% of the merchandise which is actually transported in this area. Uh, you have uh, nearly two thirds passing through the Straits of Malaga, and if you if, if, if they continue off the Horn of Africa, where we have Piracy, anti piracy uh, activities, where we also bring in military elements, not military elements of the European Union because we don't have it, but we can make use of the military uh, instruments of our member states. So uh, there we have a strategic interest, we, 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 have, we have a political interest. We have a political interest in the situation uh, on, on, on the Korean Peninsula. Um, if there is a major problem if our North Korean friend would uh, implement rhetoric, uh, then we would, would be very close to war on the, on, on the peninsula. That would have repercussions on the, on, the, on the European Union in terms of economics, but also in terms of politics. So therefore, we have to stay, uh, we have to be engaged. We have done there probably a better job uh, back uh, back uh, at the end of the 90s when the European Union joined KEDO, which was uh, an international effort at the time to supply North Korea with an alternative uh, um, source source of energy. We spent also quite quite some money on on this exercise, but when this down, died down and was changed into the six party talks, the European Union uh, was not part of the of the six party talks. So there we, we have to work indirectly uh, with, with our partners to, to get the information and also to try, uh, try, try to influence North Korea, which we are trying to do uh, right now. We are participating in, in, in the various uh, sanctions, but uh, we are also trying uh, to, to make use of the relatively good contact which exists in North Korea because the European Union has consistently given humanitarian aid to North Korea and we have built up together with NGOs in, 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 in North Korea a distribution system which makes sure that not the majority of the aid given automatically ends up in, with, with the military. Uh, with the high degree of militarization of the North Korean society, it's of course a little bit difficult to make sure that it is not going to the military, but I think we have managed uh, relatively well that the majority is going directly uh, to, 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 to people and, 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 and families in, in, in need. Uh, of course, we have to, we have to engage uh, with, with China. Uh, we have a long-standing relationship with, with, with China. I, I made this experience myself around to 1999 to 2002. I think China had probably very high hopes in the European Union. Uh, it was very forthcoming. We had waves of visitors, uh, and we were, we were exchanging them um, as, a, so, uh, as a sort of counterweight to, to the United States. But I think the Chinese have then figured out that we are very good in certain areas like, uh, like economics, but we are not really a counterweight in the traditional hard security sense uh, uh, to, the, to the United States, and we never wanted to be. Uh, so there we have seen a certain, a certain de a development, and I think the relationship has become now, to a certain degree, um, more, more realistic. And uh, the relationship is, is actually uh, 
quite quite good within the limits which we, which we all know. But we have we have regular we have, we have regular summit meetings. We have we have introduced recently uh, a, a, a strategic and a security dialogue uh, with with China. Uh, we will also try to make sure that, 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 that we have more military to military contact, which we do together, of course, with, with, with our member states. Um, the, um, China played also a, a positive uh, role uh, in, around uh, the euro because uh, China has an interest that the euro exists as the second largest reserve currency of the world. This was a means to diversify uh, for, for China to get away from the dollar. I think now, nowadays we, we think that about 30 to 32 percent of, of reserves of China are actually held in, in, in Europe. Uh, so they have, they, have, they have also played a, a positive role in all the efforts of stabilizing the Europe, um, also in, in, the, in the context of international financial institutions. And they have also offered uh, some specific grants uh, to some of our member states. That gets us, of course, then in, in areas where one has to steer uh, the boat relatively well. Um, we have also seen some efforts to uh, work with a certain part of our member states, especially the East European member states, where, where, where China developed uh, uh, very in, in intensive um, uh, contacts and we had to remind a little bit that we have something like a common foreign and security policy and uh, that we have to act as a, as a block uh, in whenever we have a policy. Uh, so that, that, that was one area uh, where, where we had to, to, um, to, uh, to, to be careful. Uh, we do have uh, 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 this, this interest that uh, sea lanes, sea communication line, lanes are, are, uh, remain open. I, I have mentioned that. We also have an interest, uh, uh, especially now in the Arctic, because of climate change. Uh, the Northern Passage is, is opening up. This is developing quite, quite quickly. About uh, four or five years ago, we had four or five passages uh, a year. Now we have about 45, and this is uh, expected to increase to 200 to 300. Uh, that has strategic impli in, in implications. Um, for 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 transport on sea because of course it's it's it's, it's much shorter, but we also have there are some strategic implication in plans to further development uh, to, to further develop the train links between Asia and, and, and Europe, um, partly uh, projects which are run by Russia, which is trying to engage also more with 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 Asia. Just to remind you that the APEC summit uh, was organized in Vladivostok, um, and, 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 and Russia was giving uh, the, the also a sort of pivot sign that they have not forgotten uh, uh, the, uh, Asia. Also, I must say this is what I know from my contacts met with a certain skepticism from some of the Asian countries because they feel that the prime goal for, for Russia is to develop the Far East and, and, and the Eastern part of, of, of Siberia. So it's perhaps not a genuinely uh, interest in Asia as such, but nevertheless, um, uh, Russia has uh, joined together with the United States uh, two years ago, the East Asia Summit, um, which is uh, an institution where so far at least the European Union or the member states of the European Union are conspicuously absent from. Uh, that has developed uh, out of uh, an ASEAN initiative and um, uh, we have now a situation with that, that we certainly have to watch it because all the major players are, are there including, including India and the European Union is not there. Well I don't want to have, a, 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 I don't see the need that we join there immediately. We have to see how this East Asia summit is developing, what will be the focus, will it become a security or security policy related uh, 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 gathering, uh, then, then uh, I think it will be more, more interesting. I, I, I take it from, 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 from this recent speech that decision was taken on the side of the United States that uh, the president 
uh, will have will set aside the time to attend uh, this meeting regularly as he has already done uh, twice well, that will of course uh, add visibility to the to, to the to the gatherings and will also have um, an impact on on agenda setting so this is certainly something we we, we, we will have to have in, 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 in mind. Um, we have a long, uh, a long standing uh, relationship with, with ASEAN, more than 35 years. We are in a dialogue process which had its ups and downs. Uh, when, when, uh, when the situation in Myanmar, uh, Burma, Myanmar, uh, was, was as bad as it was, and our Asian friends were pushing that um, Myanmar could join the Asia Europe meeting, ASEAN. That had also negative repercussions on our ASEAN uh, relationship, but this has been overcome now, and uh, now is the rush to, to, to Burma, Myanmar. Everybody wants to be there uh, and, and wants, wants, wants to show the, the flag. Uh, there, uh, I think, for once we have we have not missed the boat. Uh, uh, the uh, high representative who made, a, made an early visit. We have opened an office, which is now turned into, in, in, into an embassy. Uh, we have we, we have created a center, which is uh, engaged in the reconstruction of the, of, of the society of, of, of Myanmar. One should not forget that over over, over the last. Uh, uh, decades, uh, the, the social infrastructure has been destroyed. There's no real civil society. There are no real parties, and they have to gear up now for for, for elections with all the negative repercussions that that can have if the the the, so, the, the, the society is, is not prepared. Uh, I think we will give them a hand uh, together with with the United States uh, in preparing for uh, the ASEAN presidency, which will be next year. Again, uh, you have a very small Ministry of Foreign Affairs in, 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 in Myanmar, which doesn't have the experience in uh, doing all the preparatory uh, meetings. So I think this is something we, 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 we can, we can uh, work on. Um, we also have, we, we also have, uh, have to see that, that, that we work uh, on, uh, with, our, um, uh, with our strategic partners in the region, uh, the European Union has worldwide has uh, ten strategic partnerships, and uh, four out of the of the ten are with uh, Asian partners, namely with China, with India, with South Korea, and Japan. And if I take into consideration that two more strategic partners, namely the United States and Russia, have a special interest in 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 in, in Asia, then six out of of of, of the ten are heavily. Uh, in, in involved. Another strategic partner, Brazil, is also starting to get more active in, in, in Asia. So this network of strategic partnerships has to be developed and also to, to, be, to be activated. Uh, it's a little bit unclear what it really means, what is a strategic partnership, and, and uh, you can see sometimes the question mark in the eyes of a Japanese when, when he says, well, you have a, you have a, a Strategic partnership with us, and we have a strategic partnership with with with, with China. What what is the common the common factor? Well, I have tried to develop that in in in, in a recent article. Uh, uh, I think one has to make a distinction <coughs> whether it is a, a, a strategic partnership of necessity or it is a strategic partnership uh, because you are uh, generally like-minded. So uh, I would put. Uh, some countries into the strategic uh, partnership of necessity because you simply can't afford to, to cannot afford to to, uh, to to neglect them. So this is this is one. Uh, but th there we have a framework <coughs> and a framework which we, which we which we have have uh, have to use. Coming back uh, to the to the to the uh, to the uh, ec economic field. Uh, there are so many of the uh, free trade agreements going on, and having, as it was mentioned, uh, negotiated in the, uh, in, in the Uruguay round the rules of origins, I am perfectly aware that you can use the rules of origin in a, in, in a manner that at the end of the day, uh, you add up free trade agreements that you don't have free trade, but uh, no liberalization, but you have uh, a rather complex system of mutually exclusive arrangements. So to have open regionalism, I think this is an area where I would also like to seek 
uh, cooperation with the United States because I think this is something where, where we have an interest. And we also share the interest, and I think uh, um, uh, uh, President Obama, I think, said it in, in, in Hawaii. He would like to see a seamless market. I think that was the impression which, which, he, which he used. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's probably a good project, but we have to make sure that the seamless market is working uh, in different directions, including also the direction for the European Union. Well, I, I, this was a picture with uh, broad brushes, and if you have some questions, I would be happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, <coughs> perhaps I can start with one question, and then I would encourage others to uh, take a moment and think about what you'd like to ask. Uh, you listed a number of uh, areas where uh, Europe, and it's not just the EU, I mean, Europe more broadly uh, focused has um, strategic interests in Asia. Uh, two lines of communications, uh, maintaining free trade there, uh, uh, the North-South Korea issue, China. And yet you also sort of glibly said, well, we don't have a first fleet. <laughs> uh, so how do you square that circle? I mean, um, do you see any circumstances under which uh, Europe, not necessarily just the EU, but European partners uh, might uh, deploy uh, forces to um, ensure those strategic interests in Asia. Um, in a in a in a in a very uh, limited manner, yes, M limited manner, like what we are doing on um, in in uh, off uh, off the coast of Somalia. I mean, these anti-piracy operations, which which we which we uh, undertake, uh, they have the military element. Um, fortunately, I must say, the piracy in the Straits of Malacca and the situation is 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 uh, diminishing. So I don't see, with fingers crossed, the necessity to become active in in, in that area for the for the, for the foreseeable future. But I would see, I would see these the, these activities rather in in a more police type con, uh, focused uh, uh, operations. I I I don't see um, uh, in, in another form of, of of engagement. I mean, having said that, we are active in, our, in 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 Asia in Afghanistan. But but there it started out as an operation of. of NATO, but nevertheless, uh, that's, that's probably one of the um, under, uh, underrated activities. Uh, uh, there are about uh, thirty thousand soldiers. Um, the, the European Union is is spending uh, quite quite some money um, in there, and we are we are also engaged in post uh, twenty fourteen. Um, uh, we are trying to have this sort of multilateral force uh, uh, approach, uh, also. And, 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 and we will stay uh, in, engaged, uh, but it is primarily in the form of activities of the member states of the European Union, uh, but coordinated uh, by the European Union. So it's a, it's a little bit a, a complicated uh, system, uh, but uh, I think we, we have shown that if, if necessary, and we have the political will, especially by those countries who actually can can, can provide also the, 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 the hardware, we, we can engage, uh, but we have not done it from the outset as a European Union, but we have, we have, we have, we have started out in, 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 in NATO operations, and I would say politically, uh, we are probably in the same situation as here in the United States. The appetite for further engagement is, is, is uh, disappearing. Let me open it up to the floor, please. Okay, good afternoon. My name is Heidi Mauber. I'm the Austrian Marshal Fund Fellow here at CTR. Uh, my question is really back to what you were saying. You have this economic power, and Europe, in the end, has these advantages of offering this big market. And I was wondering if you could elaborate a bit more how the financial crisis, and especially the image of Europe being in financial trouble, also hinders, uh, in the end, uh, the efforts that the European Union is taking in Asia, generally. 
Well, I am I am the last person to tell you that that uh, two years or three years of efforts to rescue the euro with a high level meeting for the last time uh, has uh, increased our credibility dramatically. Uh, however, uh, speaking where I speak, uh, I, I I don't have the impression that the financial cliff is. Uh, something very good for advertisement on the, on the other hand. So I think uh, one should not be too harsh on one side and, 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 and on overlooking problems. But there, there's no point in saying I have a problem, you have a problem, but just keep keeping the, 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 the proportions. Um, in, in economic terms, uh, of course, there has, there, there has been a, a, a certain recession, uh, but when we look into the trade relationship with the Asian countries, um, uh, trade has done very well, so we have we, we, we have supplied or, or uh, we have stayed an open market, uh, and that was also essential for for or is essential for, for for a country like like China, which still is very much depending on on export. We do, however, and this I think is uh, what an illustration of what I meant that we have to take care of our own interests. We started uh, this, this uh, anti-dumping investigation of solar panels. Well, you might say, well, solar panels, but if, you, if you're aware that solar panels is about 10% of, 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 uh, of Chinese exports to the European Union, we are talking about a big chunk of, 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 of trade. Um, but uh, from the economic crisis, I would say we, we, we have done relatively well. And we have seen in other parts of the world more dramatic events. Because of the, of the tensions between Japan and, and, and China, uh, there was for some time a reduction of flights, of passenger flights between Japan and China by minus 50%. Uh, the, the, the export of Japanese cars to China uh, were, were reduced dramatically uh, for, for, for some time, but now it is moving uh, back. So, where strategically speaking, this was a very worrying uh, uh, development because uh, this, uh, this red line, which for a long time was separating economics from politics, uh, did not hold anymore. Uh, another example was the, was the reduction of the export of rare earths by, by, by China, which then led to a joint action by, by, by the United States, by the European Union and, and, and Japan in, 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 in the WTO. Uh, where it paid back, by the way, that we were making quite some effort in 2002 to get the China within the WTO, which is also a little bit part of our overall policy as, as uh, stressing uh, the, the value and the necessity of, of, of a legal framework uh, that we get uh, partners to play by the rules and uh, as it is always called to be uh, a responsible stakeholder. So I think there, I would put the whole policy there pursued also with the China and other countries on, 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 on the positive side because they, 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 have, they have engaged. Uh, we have to do a little bit more of, 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 of public diplomacy. There's a lot of interest uh, uh, in, in Asia how we have overcome or how we think we will overcome our, our crisis. But uh, look back to the, where, where did the crisis start from? How did the crisis move from here to there, or from and, 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 and another to, to, to Asia? Uh, our Asian friends sometimes have a tendency to forget that there was an Asian financial crisis, which I do remember very well. Um, so uh, there we can compare notes a little bit and, and, and see which measures we were, were, were taking at the time, which did work and which didn't work. And this is these were extremely interesting exchanges which which we do have. With, with Asian partners in, in, in comparing uh, historic notes because we, we are a little bit there where they have been 10 years ago and they have managed to overcome it and we shall overcome. <laughs> Other questions? Yep. Thank you very much. I'm Mike Ponte. I work for the Democratic Justice Party of Taiwan. I'm not going to ask about Taiwan. I wonder what your view is of the Trans Pacific Partnership looking at it from a European perspective. Do you feel excluded? Does the EU, the proposed EU-US free trade agreement link to that? What are the, what are the connections there? 
No, um, of course, this is this is part of this uh, economic um, uh, architecture, trade architecture, architecture which, which which is in the evolving. Um, I think we were looking for some time uh, with interest, but not terribly concerned of what was going on because uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership started out on a relatively modest uh, basis uh, when, when we looked at the participants. But now if it's going to realize that it will turn into a free trade agreement between Japan and NAFTA, I think then it will have stronger re repercussions. Um, and, uh, but I think we can use it uh, also strategically, also in combination now with uh, the, the announcement that we will have a trans-Pacific, uh, sorry, a trans-Atlantic dimension added to this, uh, this Pacific, because that will certainly um, make our, uh, our Chinese friends think twice if they should not engage more now between China and the European Union because they were not very interested to, to get into a free trade agreement. They just wanted that we will do that. Uh, uh, we will start negotiating an investment uh, agreement. But I would suspect if this is played uh, correctly, uh, this could be a sort of triangular pressure uh, which would add uh, a missing uh, uh, side to, to, to the triangle, which then could be Again, if handled as I tried to explain in the spirit of open regionalism, which could de facto contribute uh, and and uh, to 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 liberalisation of of, tra of trade. Just to follow up on that, that question, uh, as you, as the United States negotiates the Trans-Pacific Partnership and as it negotiates the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, to what degree do we have to coordinate these? These two sets of negotiations, so that we weren't imbalanced. Does this all merge at some point into a potential for a larger agreement that is triangular in nature? Well, I think what we still have in in our genes, but this is perhaps uh, for, for especially for for my uh, colleagues from from TT Trade to to to, to judge. Uh, ideally. Uh, these uh, various free trade agreements are what we would like to call stepping stones uh, on on the way to a multilateral uh, system. Uh, as I tried to explain in the past, we have, we have done it the other way around. Multilater multilateralism first and bilateralism only if necessary. And I think now we have a change. No one has worked. Yeah, now, now we do bilateral work uh, first, but if it is a stepping stone and if we keep a certain co 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 <coughs> coherence and consistence, that could at the, at the end of the day lead to a strengthened multilateral system. Uh, if this agreement, and we should not forget, uh, they have to be notified to the WTO, uh, they have to cover basically all trade, and basically all trade in WTO language means uh, that you cannot exclude a sector, i.e. you cannot have a free trade agreement without agriculture, and, 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 and uh, otherwise uh, the, uh, <coughs> w, the WTO uh, need not accept uh, uh, this free trade, agreement, free trade agreement. So we have a sort of, of, of policeman uh, who, who, who doesn't have a gun, but there is a policeman uh, who is who is who is watching over the system? And uh, I would not give up the hope that we, at the end of the day, come back to the multi to the to the multilateral approach. Yes, sir. Yes, hi. I'm, uh, as I said, I'm the president of the U.S. Association of the United States. Uh, we are an NGO that represents the EU, the EU and the United Nations as a special consultative status. Uh, we also have a group that follows us ever since 2010 at the UN uh, as a European Union. Uh, we've been working for about 20 years, probably in the EU, in Europe, Rome, Luxembourg, and over here in New York. Now, one question for you, which I think is quite important in the context. Do you think there is a perception that there might be a tendency to go toward a G2 situation in the world after the collapse of the Soviet Union, a new tendency to create a, a bilateral competition with China vis-a-vis -vis the United States? And do you think that Europe is somehow being left out of this as a multilateral world, as Moyen, uh, the French, and some others would like to see? Because I must, I must say, as an NGO artist, 
we worked wonderfully with the US, very, very much at the UN for many years in, also in the relationship. But every time we work with Asia, for some reasons, we have some, let's say, some kind of interference that we've lived through twice already, in the 1990s and 2010. So is there a perception that sometimes our friends don't really seem to see a positive side in our working with Asia for a G2 situation? What is your opinion? Well, I, I think that the question about the G2 uh, is already dying again. Uh, I think it was about five five years ago. There was more talk about about G two, uh, but I think it's it's. Um, I don't I don't see it. Uh, do you see that the United States has enough uh, parallel interests to gang up with China against long-standing uh, partners like the European Union or Japan or? Korea, I don't, I don't, I, I don't see that at all. So, so the a key two between between the United States and 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 China as the two uh, major powers, the one already being the other, the, the other one emerging. I don't. Well, I fighting each other, then, as the Soviet Union, the U.S. and pulling people behind them, the nations behind them. Uh, a new Cold War. Right, basically, yes. No, I don't. I don't see that because I think we we we, uh, we are uh, pol politically, you know, the geopolitically in, in, in a different situation compared to uh, the first Cold 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 War. Um, uh, we have had in between all this uh, this this uh, this, uh, uh, this um, uh, development of global globalization, which is more than just the word. I think the interconnectivity. Uh, in, in, in areas uh, not only of economics but also political security interests, I think has 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 grown, and I think it is not in the it, it's not in the interest of of, 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 of China and it's not in the interest of the United States to get into into, into a sort of uh, cold war which 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 we had um, at at the time. I think I I don't see this indication. Of course, if 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 if, if I talk to to, to planners and, and, and they have they develop all sorts of scenarios what could uh, happen if but this is this is the, the job of planners uh, to, to have this the, these games but I think um, real policy making as, as far as I see it in, in my part of the world and whatever I talk to American colleagues uh, I, I don't see a development in that respect Uh, good afternoon. My name is Andrew. I'm an intern at the Korea Economic Institute. Um, I was asked by one of the directors to sort of ask this question, and thankfully, <laughs> and thankfully you sort of brought it up, or at least the tail end of it. Um, you did mention how the EU negotiations and processes were sort of co-opted and sort of sensitive in this is by talks, and there are ongoing operations of sorts that's been humanitarian nature to make sure that food um, is provided to the populace rather than purely to the Korean military. Now that the recent nuclear tests have happened, um, how do you think if the EU was approached to come at this juncture, um, particularly now at this stressful time I imagine for everyone around, how do you think the EU, what role do you think the EU can play in with that? And how do you think it would be constructive towards the, if it were to become a seven party talk, for example? Thanks. Well, First of all, the six party talks are not moving for years now, uh, so it's a little bit. Uh, I hope I hope it's not a dead horse, but uh, re recently there was no movement in the, in the six six party talks. Um, uh, well, I think it's it, 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 of course we are in contact with with with, with Russian colleagues or, or the Chinese colleagues, and and um, we know that they have tried as one partner put it uh, from the, about the other desperately to, to get the North Koreans to stop or not to, 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 to have this nuclear test. And if, um, if these two parties don't manage uh, to calm it down uh, in, in, in North Korea, then, 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 then we certainly wouldn't have done a better job in, in, in doing that. Um, I think we, from a strategic point of view, uh, we will we, we participate certainly in the in the uh, 
uh, sanctions which which uh, have been decided by the United Nations Security Council and we also have anonymous sanctions on, 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 on top of it. So this this is the uh, the solidarity aspect. Uh, on the other hand, um, uh, uh, I think we have we, we have we have to see that that uh, we better control uh, other elements. Um, I think there are still uh, arms sold out of uh, North Korea to other countries uh, where we could cooperate uh, with, with our partners to to get that stopped. Um, uh, we, um, we also uh, try to keep communication lines with North Korea open. Uh, I think six of our member states have, have um, embassies and we encourage them to leave the embassies there because we don't believe in, in, in isolating a, a partner in the international society. This is not, not a good idea. and. Um, if, 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 if I had a personal comment, uh, I, I think we, we, we have to see that we, that we can have that engagement uh, because uh, I see a certain lo logic in the behavior of, of, of North Korea. Uh, I think they are rather able uh, diplomats uh, because they are making use of the only thing which they have uh, uh, all over again. And, and uh, there, is, there is this nuclear proliferation element and they are uh, when you look back in the, in the, the history we have very often this uh, two steps forward three steps back because then you can make it the next time two steps forward again and you don't move uh, and I think this is what 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 they're, what they're doing perfectly but they get uh, concessions uh, once in a while for not doing what they stop at the moment and then they, they go back to the two and three steps so I think there's a certain logic in, 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 in this politics, uh, which helps us to understand it's of course not approval, but I think from the intellectual and analytical point of, of, of view, uh, that's, uh, that's quite a good strategy they are for, that, that, that they're pursuing within their, their system. And I think engaging with them might, might, might be uh, more promising in, 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 in the long run. I mean, I, 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 I have seen now that a uh, few uh, weeks ago they allowed officially now that uh, pro foreign journalists, which is not a terribly big uh, community in North Korea, can, can make use of the internet. Um, I don't know if anybody has been to North Korea, but if you go there, you have to, to, to leave your portable and your computers uh, at, at, at the border. And, and so there is there there is some some movement, uh, but uh, I think collectively we have to admit we have not found the right recipe uh, to, to to deal with with the country uh, um, from the axis of evil to to engagement. Nothing has uh, has really worked. Um, uh, I would see, of course, possibility if China really would like to to. to Come, come to terms, so there would be more possibilities. But we were, on the other hand, I think we all understand that the appetite for, for, for China to have a, a united uh, Korea under the terms of South Korea with guarantee of the United States at its border is not the most attractive perspective either. And I think there, when we play a little bit with, with analysis in terms of international relations, I'm just talking academically, I think there are, there are, there are means to understand why we are where we are. Any questions? Yeah. In Josh Keros, the Union Embassy in Germany. Um, I would like to ask, you mentioned before uh, that all these, you know, all these bilateral agreements that we're making now, they will lead to uh, multilateral rules uh, in this uh, trade world. And I'm a bit more skeptical about it. I think uh, these bilateral agreements will just maybe create a really complex system of, you know, uh, of this all these agreements between all the countries, and if these agreements might be also. Uh, in contradiction with each other and so how 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 do we how do we how do you make these agreements compatible with each other these bilateral agreements and how do we make them compatible also with multilateral agreements already previously 
No, I mean, I, 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 I hope, I hope, I hope it was clear. I, I, I said to uh, employing the Jewish authorities, uh, uh, this is the perfect means to make sure that, that there is no trade liberalization if it is not done correctly. So. Uh, um, we have to steer uh, that, 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 that process so that we, we do have a, a, an interest to compare notes with the United States while we are negotiating our transatlantic treaties to see what is, what is going on uh, in Asia, trans, trans Pacific. But we also have to take into consideration what we already have with, with, with Korea, what we will develop, uh, develop with, with Japan. At the, end, and, at the end of the day, uh, the measure has to come from the WTO. Uh, we have the rules of the GATT, GATT agreement, we have uh, what I mentioned, the rules of, the, the rules of origin, we have, the, we have the TRIPS agreement in, in, in the WTO, uh, we have a rather weak uh, uh, investment agreement, and, and, and uh, there is a tendency now in the, in, in the WTO to work a little bit on, 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 on specific issues like IP uh, agreements. Uh, to develop international standards. So, um, and the rules which exist already for free trade agreements, which could be sharpened and, 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 and further developed uh, in principle, but there's no political will uh, within the WTO to do that right now because the whole process has, has stalled. Uh, the, there the WTO remains um, the yardstick, and if we come to the conclusion that a certain agreement does not fulfill the rules and regulations, we have the dispute settlement system of, of, of the WTO. And, and, and that might be the last controlling instance. But of course, it's better to do it while you go along than waiting until the end, and then you go to court, basically. But I think this is what we, uh, we have this multilateral framework, and therefore I hope I'm an old defendant, I must say, of the WTO, despite uh, Doha, because this is the means to control what is going on, while we all know we, we would like to have better norms and regulations. Other questions? Thank you very much. If you allow me once more, I wanted to come back to what you mentioned about the Human Rights Clause that the European Union is attaching on as a future because it sounded a bit that we have these human rights clause mainly in the end to make the European Parliament agree. Um, from your perspective, I mean, how would this work out in the end? Um, we had conditionality, especially negative conditionality in the partnership and cooperation agreements with the Mediterranean, and there the European Union was in the end very often criticized for not using them. And everyone was saying in the end, they are not useful at all. So how do you see the potential for this human rights, rights clause in the end to have any effect at all? Well, the, 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 the clause, perhaps I should have been more precise, uh, we talk now more about the rule of law clause, which is the, the, the larger concept, because this includes also the concept of good governance. Um, uh, so it's not, if you only talk about human rights, um, you get a little bit, especially in, in, in Asia, uh, that people don't like that because they thought the, the colonial powers are coming back and they are lecturing down on us uh, what, 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 what to do in human rights and so and then you turn them off immediately and, 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 and you, 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 you lose uh, traction. Uh, I think it is especially important that with the like-minded countries I have mentioned, that we manage to agree on this uh, standard. So if free trade agreements and, and linked to framework agreements signed by Japan, Korea, India, United States, Brazil, have this standard, and it's much easier to say to other countries, which might have to be more concerned and more directly uh, concerned, that this, this is an international standard. That's not, not something I bring up because of, of you. So that would be international consensus building in creating and setting standards. Uh, it's an